in this series of videos, we are going to look at how to use Web SQL injection to hack web applications. We're going to be looking at what Web SQL injection is. We can look at the vulnerabilities associated with Web SQL injection. We're going to look at what types of things can be done with Web SQL injection, how to determine which sites have the exploits available. We're also going to look at the way hackers will actually use SQL injection to attack websites. We're also going to look at what we can do to prevent these types of attacks. So one important thing we want to look at is the OWASP BWA, which is the Broken Web Applications Project. So we're going to go here to the OWASP Broken Web Applications Project. And what we want to do is actually download the Broken Web Applications Project. This is a collection of vulnerable web applications already that we are going to include on a virtual machine. I'm not going to show you exactly how to install this on a virtual machine. I have some other courses that explain how to install things on a virtual machine, like my ethical hacking program. But more importantly, now we just want to download the OWASP broken web applications project by clicking this download link here. And what we want to do at this stage is accept and proceed, agree and proceed here. And what you'll find is a link to a stable release, the 1.2 version, which I have here. And this will be allowing me to install this on my virtual machine. So I simply want to download this and then install it on my particular virtual machine, as I'll show you in a second how I have done that. So once you download it, you will get a uh, file that you can then load up in your virtual machine. So let me go to my virtual machine and show you how I've done that. And um, you will see that I've actually have the VM running here. And then you can see this is running, I want to go to the specific IP address I've installed this OWASP project at. So I open up my browser. And once I have that browser open, I need to type in the web address 192.168.56.101, which is the link to where my OWASP PWA project is located. And once I do that, you should be presented with a screen like this. And this is basically where the OWASP will be located. And then we'll be able to find vulnerabilities and see how that all works. Before we delve into exactly what Web SQL injection is, how it's done, how to prevent it, I just want to inform you that Web SQL injection is ranked very highly in the total number of threats around the world. In fact, Web SQL injection has been the attributing factor to many of the intrusions, uh, high profile intrusions all around the world. Now, while there are some good literature associated with web SQL injection, they are mostly geared to programmers or web application developers, and not really coming from the point of view of a systems administrator who is responsible for maintaining the safety and security of the web applications and the websites. In this series of tutorials, I'm hoping to share with you some details of exactly what hackers do to actually infiltrate networks and what systems administrators can do to hinder what hackers can do and simple tools to use to find these vulnerabilities and what to do to protect a network from these types of attacks. So what exactly is Web SQL injection? Well, what happens is that sometimes software applications accept data from an untrusted source, which could be a normal user, a malicious user, or even a hacker. Now, what happens is when that data is not validated by the database, the database then allows the hacker or malicious user to then execute a SQL query 
which then results in the database performing in an unplanned way. This unplanned way then results in potentially releasing data to the malicious user or hacker that could then be used to compromise the database. I'm going to show you a very simple query just now, and this will be used just to give you an illustration of how the SQL query can be done. We'll be moving on to more advanced SQL queries in the coming videos, but let's go in and have a look at how a malicious user or hacker, and I talk about malicious users because a malicious user could be a normal user who has been infected, and that machine then runs these sorts of queries. So here we have a string query. I'm not going to go into too much detail with this query, but I'm just going to type something in here. So this equals, and let's say select, and we want to select from users where username equals some data. And we then want to also include plus username again. I'm not going to much detail for this right now, but I will cover all this shortly. And let's look at a user password equals. So I'm using an and statement here and the password equals again some data from the user and plus password again i'll go into this select query in more detail over the coming lessons i just want to quickly show you how a hacker would create a query to get information from the database so simply it's going to retrieve a username and password from this database so select I need to put an asterisk here to select all data from this table uses where the username is the username and the password is the password and that will get us data from the database I need to correct the spelling here, but I also want to show you another line where we use a very similar select statement. So let me just copy some of this to the next line so you can see how that works. And in this case, we're going to use a statement that is true and then circumvent the database by then allowing the database to retrieve the data that we actually want. So what I need to do here is simply type in select and select all data from the user's database again. But in this situation, what we want to do is change part of this query to basically say where the username equals say John, for example, and the password is, let's call it example password. Not many people would use John and password as example password, but here is the trick to this select query. And this is the SQL injection that we are talking about. I can put an or statement here, and I can say a true condition. So. For example, 1 equals 1, or A equals A, which will always be true. It doesn't matter what you use here, 3 equals 3, 5 equals 5. It doesn't really matter, because at the end of the day, what we have is, I'll explain the statement to you, all we're doing is we're selecting everything from this database where username is John and the password is example password. Now if that condition is false, the or A equals A will always be true. I can change that to 
one equals one, three equals three, five equals five, it doesn't matter. That condition is going to return a true value. And if that returns a true value, it's going to then give me all the users from that database by then dumping that database to me because that condition is true. And this is how hackers use these types of select statements to then cause the database not to be able to validate the data correctly and then perform an unexpected action by giving the hacker the details that they want. So this is the type of attack that could then give users thousands or millions of email addresses and passwords as we've seen in recent attacks on major websites. This is the type of query that is done to then get data out of the database. The database does not realize that an attack is being performed because it's a legitimate query. There are many applications that are susceptible to this type of web SQL injection vulnerabilities. And the reason for this is that nowadays, many web applications are using frameworks to connect to things like databases or programming languages. And this opens up the vulnerabilities to the attackers and is causing regulators and security professionals to then scramble to find fixes to make sure that their systems are not going to be compromised. Apart from things like, you know, just the financial loss to a corporation, there are things like loss of client information, uh, stealing of credit card information. There's basically shutting down the whole website of the corporation. It's the bad publicity that comes from it. You know, some ramifications even include that a business could basically be going out of business because of a severe, you know, attack on their website. So these are the types of things that web SQL injection vulnerabilities can expose in a corporation. And this course is going to share some of these web SQL injection vulnerabilities, show you how they are actually done, and then show how we can protect sites from these vulnerabilities. The issue is to remember that it's not only the financial loss that can happen. If a corporate site has got malicious code installed on the actual site, well, a visitor to that particular website could then be exposed to this malicious code, which then replicates itself on that user's computer. And that user's computer could then be used to attack another website. So there are so many other ramifications from having web SQL injection vulnerabilities on an actual website. So this issue is not going to go away anytime soon. And it is an important issue to explore and learn how it's done and what we can do to make sure it doesn't happen. You are going to see a number of demo exploits, how they are written, how they are performed, and the types of impacts they are going to have. So you will then be able to learn how to best to protect yourself from these types of attacks.